I used to make Gatsby all the time in the Bronx. <laughs> Firstly, congratulations on being number one for three weeks running on the chart. It's been awesome on our side. Also, given the fact that in South Africa, the song actually came out in our summer season, which is fantastic. Um, but I know there was quite an interesting story about how you actually came to get the mashup of the Rihanna and the Luther Vandross song and meeting Amorphous. Can you tell us more about that journey? Well, we were in, uh, thank you so much, man. And I'm honored that you know, Africa's the motherland. And to actually be in America and to, to tell, I've been bragging so much that I'm number one over there. I'm yeah. like, I'm number one in the motherland. <laughs> and so it's just such an honor um, for South Africa to embrace me like that. Uh, so I'm on vacation with my brother, uh, DJ Khaled, our yeah. families. And then my brother Dre of Cool and Dre, super producer. He said, Joe, you got to see this. This is amazing. So he showed me a little video clip of DJ Amorphous mm -hmm. mashing up the Luther Vandross and the Kiss It Better Rihanna. And um, I was like, yo, this is amazing because I had never seen nobody mash that the young and the, and the old school together like this. Yeah. So Dre was like, I'm going to go in the studio. I'm going to produce it. So he went in the studio. He produced it. Me, him, and Khaled sat down. And we came up with the song like you know it now. Mm -hmm. uh, we contacted Amorphous, we gave him credit, we gave him publishing, we gave him money, we flew him in for the video, uh, just to show and embrace the youth. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and to because he was the true visionary of this. Yeah. And uh, and it is what it is. And Rihanna, she cleared it. She says she loves Fat Joe and Luke Evangelos. A state said they love Fat Joe, and so we bless him here. And here we are with this song. Yeah, that's an awesome story. And also, you know, you were away for quite some time, two years to be exact. You went to pursue acting and all of those things. Initially, although that was your intention, what would you say the biggest learning curve was for you, aside from just pursuing your acting career during that break? Um, well, you know, I created it, you know, during COVID, I created a show called The Big Big Show. Yes. And we go on Instagram every day at 8 p.m. New York time. And uh, you name it, we have them on here. With, from Kalani to Alicia Keys to Mike Tyson to Mar Mayweather, whoever, Kenya Barris, yes. whoever, whoever you name, we've had them. And just to get people over COVID, people are dying, people are sick, people are losing their jobs. And, and, and that's also the same intention with the song was to uplift people, to make people happy, to make people proud. And now it makes sense that it's number one over there because this song yeah. is like a barbecue song because mm -hmm. over there is summer already. So it's yeah. like a barbecue song, it's like a party song and you throw it with <laughs> your family. So it makes sense that it's number one over there now. That's that's really uh, that's really telling. But for me, you know, I created this show. It's on Diddy's channel over here in America, Revolt TV every week. And I'm having a great time just bringing the issues that affect our people to the light, you know. And uh, and that's what I've been doing every night. And and I've been uh, I've been having a great time doing it. Yeah. And also, you know, you've been in the industry for almost two decades now. So you've been through it all. You started as Amorphous started as well, starting very young. And I want to know in your experience. How has the music and the way in which collaborations happen, especially with new artists, changed in this day and age, especially if you include all the digital things that's happening around the world? Well, the first thing, this is a very big, big question. This is a, like, it, 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 it's the kitchen sink, right? Yeah. But artists years ago didn't collaborate as much as the artists today. Mm. And we took our time so say the legendary Eric B and Rakim, they would drop an album once every four to five years. And yeah. even me when I first started. So a lot of us would drop an album, tour, take a time out, think about it, then go back into making an album. That's not how the kids work today. The kids go from studio to studio. Little Yachty, the first day Kodak Black came out of jail, they already had a song, second day shot a video. They moving like this. They yeah. moving like this, they working, they collaborating, which it's always been uh, 
great for the art of music is collaboration. People getting together, people working together, people uh, introducing uh, other artists to their uh, fan base. And uh, I love collaborating with artists, it's very important. Yeah, and we speak about collaborations and I know throughout South Africa and also African artists, you always talk about the motherland and you talk about it with so much love. And what's awesome is there's been a lot of South African artists who've actually come up. So you've got Black Coffee, we've got Nasty C, we've got uh, Shoma Josie. So I would love to know from you, is there anyone in particular that you would like to work with and collaborate with from South Africa? You know, my favorite African song of all time yeah. It's an old school. It's from Magic System. And uh, and believe it or not, out of all the artists I tell you that I would like to collaborate with, I would like to collaborate with Magic System. Oh, this, you know, their music helped me get through some tough times. Mm. And uh, <laughs> and then they didn't you know, that's, that's, you know, Magic System, man, they're my favorite African group of all time. Yeah. And so I love all the artists and all the newer artists and everybody doing their thing. But uh, if, they, if they was like, yo, Joe, what's the, what's the one? It would be a collaboration with them. Mm. Yeah, that's so cool. That's so interesting. And, you know, we speak about the African sound. I, I notice a lot of producers and artists these days are going back to their cultural roots. So you see a rise in Latin American sounds coming through, African sounds coming through. Do you think, and I hope I'm not alluding to anything interesting, but in your future sounds to come, maybe after the single has popped off, do you think that you would incorporate more of that sound into your new music, perhaps? Man, I would love to. Uh, but you know, I said this before it went beyond viral in America. Did mm -hmm. I say all the music come from Africa? The drums come from Africa. Salsa music, uh, any kind of music, the music, the Brazilian music, it's African. All this comes back from Africa. And so no matter what genre of music we've been doing, we've been always doing African music. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, some people get offended by it because some people are like really into their sound and they don't really understand that it came from the motherland. Uh, I would love to do that. I, I, you know, I would love to do that. That's that's a great idea, actually. Yeah. See, I just gave you a great idea. That's awesome. Now you gave me a great idea. <laughs> okay. I like that. Yeah, I'm so glad. And then since we are talking about the future, what are your plans for the future? Do you have a new single coming out? Any collaborations at all plans? You know, I got a, uh, I got a uh, album coming out possibly in June. You know, I got a show on TV over here called The Big Big Show, uh, The Fat Joe Show on Revolt. And I'm making a soundtrack. And this is the first single, Sunshine and the Light, off the yeah. soundtrack of The Big Big Show. So I've been working on that. I guess it's my, it's Fat Joe's version of Grown and Sexy, AKA a two-step. Um, but uh, let's see, it sounded great. It, it sounded really, really great. I can definitely tell you that a lot of South African fans are really looking forward to it, especially with us at Good Old FM. Um, but we've spoken a lot about South Africa and we've got a lot of cultural heritage. So what we love doing is also asking our guests really interesting questions about certain South African words or foods or what they think they are. So this is just the, the fun part of the interview. Um, so I'm going to ask you a phrase or a word and then you can just tell me what you think it means. Um, these are quite common in South Africa and when you do eventually come to visit after COVID, fingers crossed, you'll have to know some of these things. Is that okay? Well, you know I've been to South Africa a couple of times. Yeah, but you're going to come back and you're going to perform Sunshine uh, Life. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> okay, cool. Right. So if I say the word load shedding to you, what do you think it means? If you say the word load shedding? Yeah. Uh, the soup's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> That's a brilliant response. I never would have expected that. So in South Africa, we have something called load shedding and we have different stages. So it's basically where our power utility basically cuts off the power um, 
in certain areas for say one hour. Oh, so low power is low chitty. Yeah, that's what it means. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, <and> that, <laughs> so it has nothing to do with how to cold soup. Nothing at all. <laughs> Okay, cool. So the next one I would love to know is what do you think the Kapsa Klopsa are? The Kapsa Klopsa are? Yeah. The club is shutting down early today. <laughs> <laughs> this is brilliant. Oh, goodness. Okay, so the Kapsa Klopsa has got nothing to do with the clubs at the all. The Kapsa Klopsa has nothing to do with the clubs? No, so what it is, is it's actually a cultural event for a lot of our Cape Tonians, especially the Cape Coloured um, heritage, where it's called Tweeden Nivayard, which translates to Second New Year. So upon apartheid afterwards, uh, there were obviously a lot of people who were uh, discriminated against of colour. So what the coloured people did was they basically had their own New Year's. They made with- their own New Year. Like over yeah. here in America, we got like a Juneteenth. Yeah. When, when we celebrate the true day of uh, slavery being over. Yes. So yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Everyone dresses So in other up. words, you're saying that's the real New Year. That's what the it's called. The cops to the cooks yeah. to the cook. <laughs> that's the one. So everyone dresses up in colorful clothing, bring out their trumpets, sing songs, parade the streets. It's a big affair. Beautiful. And then the other one, we've got lots of great food, which I'm sure you probably experienced when you were here before. But there's something called a Gatsby. What do you think a Gatsby is? Gatsby. Uh, well, you alluded to food, so you already yeah. gave me a hint. Um, I think the Gatsby, is it like a, a, a seafood, like a, like a seafood gumbo or something? Yo, this is crazy. Honestly, if anyone has a seafood gumbo out there, I'd be really curious to try it. But a Gatsby, I won't lie to you, you could put seafood on it. So a Gatsby is basically a massive roll. Sometimes we have a six foot long Gatsby filled with everything but the kitchen sink. So it's got chips in it. It's got, uh, it can have bacon, it can have chicken, steak, tomato, egg. Basically anything in it. It's a signature. Oh, it's, it's like it, it's like a roll with a kitchen sink. Everything. That's yeah. how I used to make. I used to make Gatsby all the time in the Bronx. <laughs> when we didn't have nothing, I make a whole stew of something. Like I'm like it's got. Yeah. It's, it's like whatever we got is what we gotta eat. Yeah, that's literally what it is. You just put everything in there, and that is satisfying for you. That's your meal. That's great. I like Gatsby. <laughs> And then the last one is also a, a food a food item. It's malfa pudding. What do you think is in malfa pudding? Oh no, that's a that, that's definitely a dessert. Malfa yeah. pudding is yeah. definitely a sweet dessert. I might have got one right. <laughs> Well done, I'll give you a point for that. So a malpa pudding is almost just like, a, it's a cake and then you put um, a syrup over it and it must be very warm straight out the oven and then you put custard over it. I think you will love that as well. Man, I would love that thing. I would okay. love that thing. So next time you're in South Africa, we can make our own Gatsby since you have experience and then okay. I'll make us a malpa pudding. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you, man. This is Good Hope FM. This is Good Hope FM.